Come on, somebody ought to give him a praise. Thank him for healing in the blood. Come on, there's healing in the blood. There's deliverance in the blood. There's power in the blood. Hear my sokata. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him for your victory. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for your deliverance. He delivered you on the cross. He healed you on the cross. He set you free on the cross. Hallelujah. Come on, thank him, thank him. Come on and thank him. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Come on, he was a lamb that was sacrificed for your sins. It should have been me on the cross. It should have been me. But he took your place. Hallelujah. You got time. Thank you, Father. Come on, just lift your hands and begin to worship him in this place. As we continue to prepare our way for the worship and the woman of God, just begin to worship him all over this place this morning. Yeah, my. Just worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, just worship him. Give him glory. Yeah, time. Just worship. I feel the presence of God in this place. I feel the spirit of worship in this place. I feel the presence of God in this place, the spirit of worship in this place. Father, we give you our worship. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. You deserve all of our worship. You deserve all of our worship. You deserve all of our praise. You deserve all of our worship. You deserve all of our praise. My soul, God, you deserve the glory. Thank you, Father. That's it. Just give him your worship. Come on, just worship him. Come on, just worship him. Worship. Come on, it's a personal moment. It's a personal moment. And you're never worshiping God if you're thinking about anything other than him. You're never in a posture of worship if your mind is anywhere else other than on him. You're never worship and you're never in worship if you're not thinking on him. If you're not thinking of his goodness, if you're not thinking of his majestic power and presence. Come on, give him your worship. This is where you take your mind off of everything and you put your mind on him. This is where you, you literally focus and you concentrate on him father we give you our worship today 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 thank you Jesus we give you our worship today we give you our worship that's it just worship him oh, I feel the presence of God I feel the presence of the Lord just worship him. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. That's it. Come on, release your worship unto God. This is a brand new year. This is a brand new season. This is a brand new opportunity. This is a brand new day. And I'm getting ready to set my mind on the victory and on the glory that God has prepared for me. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Just worship. Just worship. Just worship. Just worship. Just worship. Just worship. Yeah, I feel the presence of God in this place. I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. I feel the glory of God that is moving in this place. I feel the glory of God that is about to settle in this place. I feel the glory of God. Oh, Jesus. 
that is resting in this place. Come on, the glory of the Lord is resting in this place. Come on, the glory of the Lord is resting, is, is being released upon you, is, is about to sit down on you. Glory to God. You thought you were a target for hell to just buffet you. But can I tell you, heaven is targeting you right now. That God is targeting you, that you're in God's crossbow. You're in his crossbow. He has his eye on you. He's about to release his glory. He's about to release his glory. He's about to release his glory. We're honored this morning. Thank God for the Lord's table. Thank him for the privilege of partaking of the Lord's table. I'm so excited about this month. I'm so excited about the word that's about to come forth, not only today, but I believe all month long, we're going to receive some amazing ministry from some amazing women of God. The Lord spoke to me and, and just really put it in my heart to bring these women to, to the stage. Of course, Apostle Catherine, who is ministering today, who is no stranger to those of us here and to those of you who are watching by way of the broadcast. This woman of God is phenomenal. She is truly anointed and graced to preach and to teach and to bring the glory of God. We call her a prophet as well as an apostle because she is prophetic in nature. She is prophetic by virtue of her calling, but she's also apostolic and she is truly a woman who brings the fire. We call her a fire starter. She is one who starts fires. And I don't know about you, but if you are ready to receive, I believe a word that's going to set you on the right course for everything that God has for you in this new year, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to begin to put your hands together and I want you to begin to release a praise as we receive Apostle Catherine L. Newsom. She's going to preach the word of the Lord. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Bless the Lord. Come on, that's it. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my shit. God, we thank you in this place. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Come on, give God a radical praise. Ooh, Come on, give him a radical praise. Ooh. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. Come on, give him a radical praise. Oh, God, we bless you in this place. We honor you, God. We lift you high. We magnify your name, oh, God. We bless you in this place. Come on, this is the first praise of the first year, the first corporate praise. Come on, the first corporate praise. And we don't want to slap. Come on, we don't want to slap. Hallelujah, God, we praise you. Hallelujah, God, we bless your name. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the year that the Lord has made. Oh, God, we bless you in this place. God, we stand in your power. God, we stand in your authority. God, we stand in your might. Come on. The place where you're standing is holy ground. Come on, the place where you're standing. Who my ship is holy. Which means that whatever you need, hey my circle, whatever you need, whatever you need from God, whatever you need, whatever you need, you're standing in the spot to receive it. Father, we thank you in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, give God another radical praise. Oh my God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a blessing to be standing in the house of the Lord. On this first Sunday of the new year. Oh, God, we bless you. Oh, God, we praise you. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. My God. Woo, look at somebody and say, where would we be? I know you can't, you can't do much talking with these masks. Come on, but where would we be? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in this place. We thank you for this, your people. We thank you for your presence that we feel all over this building. Come on and give God praise. Have your seats in the presence of the Lord. 
We welcome you, Impact Church Goldsboro. We welcome you, Impact Church Global, to our very first service of the year. And we are so excited. We are so grateful. We know that there are so many, so many things that has happened in 2021. So many, I think I heard Apostle out here talking about the people that have been lost and loved ones have, who have been just, you know, things just have, has happened and even death, but I thank God that I am standing um, here today, and it's only by the grace of God. Do I have any more witnesses? It's only by the grace of God that we are in this building. Hallelujah, lifting up holy hands and giving God a corporate praise. I'm so grateful. So thank you all, those of you who have gathered in the sanctuary, you look real good. And we thank God for our global family. Amen. Impact Church Goldsboro, those of you who are here, can we give God praise for our global family? We thank God for you um, just coming and being a part of our first service of the year. And I'm just so grateful. I thank God for Apostle Vaughn at all times. Come on, let's help me thank God for the man of God. We thank God for Apostle Vaughn at all times. I thank God for such a phenomenal visionary leader who is leading us into the things of God. And I'm just really super excited about um, this January series that the man of God, God placed it upon his heart to just gather the women. And the women was going to open up this year of preaching. I said, oh, wow. I said, phenomenal. So the Preach Her on uh, Women Preaching the Gospel series is the entire month of January. And I thank God for the powerful women that is going to come behind me. I'm going to just simply lay the foundation and give you what the Lord has had me to, you know, to say to you on today, the very first Sunday of the year. And it is going to be impactful. It is going to be powerful. It is literally going to be a message that will literally change your life. If you get it, if you open up and receive, if you master it, it will literally change your life. And I, it's really an on time message that the Lord has given me. As we embark upon this new year, it really is an on-time message, so I'm, I'm grateful. So, again, happy, prosperous new year. Happy, prosperous new year. So, my prayer and um, uh, my prayer for you and your journey in 2022 is, is coming from 3 John, uh, uh, first chapter, uh, only one chapter, uh, verse 2. I want to read it in your hearing. And for those of you who want to come along and um, kind of go follow me, uh, you can. But I just want to uh, lift this up in your hearing and really believe, God, that this is going to be a part of your life, that you will experience this. My prayer is, beloved, I wish above all things. And this is the Apostle John. He's talking to the beloved Gaius in this verse of scripture here. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as. That part of the verse of scripture is so important. Even as your soul, meaning your mind, your will, and your emotions prosper. So he's saying to Gaius here, I wish, I wish above everything that your journey, that your journey be prosperous. And this is what he's saying when he says that, that you may prosper. What he's literally saying is that your journey, your course of life, um, that you will meet your goals, that you will reach your destination. He said, my prayer I wish above all things is that you may prosper, listen at this, and be in health as your soul prospers. As your soul prospers, as your mind, as your will, and as your emotions prosper. So this teaching again today is going to be so powerful and if mastered, it will change your very life. But I must warn you up front, it's the fight of your life. This topic today that I'm getting ready to share with you is the fight of your life. It is not magic. It is not an overnight process. It is actually this fight of your life is actually also the fight for your life. The, this fight of your life is also the fight for your life. So today we're going to talk about mind renovation. Today we're going to talk about the power of a renewed mind because you have to understand that our minds must be renewed. Our minds must be renovated by the word of God. And herein is why I said that mind renovation, mind renewal is the fight of your life. 
I don't know about anybody else, but trying to change the way you think. I'm talking about core beliefs. I'm talking about stuff that you, beliefs that you picked up when you were little, um, through your life experiences. I'm talking about core beliefs that tend to always want to trip you up when you're trying to go into your, the next glory of God. It is not an overnight thing, but it is possible. It is a mission that is possible with the help of the Holy Spirit because it's a spiritual phenomena. It's a spiritual phenomena of how the word of God the Bible says that the engrafted word of God is able to listen at this, to save our soul. It's able to deliver our mind. It's able to deliver our will and our emotions. The engrafted word. I'm talking about the word that has been implanted and embedded in your heart and in your mind. It has the power along with the Holy Spirit that is moving upon your soul. Just like he moved in the beginning, the Bible says that he moved upon the face of the waters. And then the word of the Lord says, and then God said, let there be light. The spirit moved and God spoke. So we see a collaboration of God's spirit and God's word in creation. That same collaboration is what's going to be needed in order to renew our minds so that we can walk into, my God, the wealthy place that God has prepared for us. The destiny, our life's destiny, our riches, our wealth, our, our, our rich relationships, and, 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 and just our phenomenal things that God has prepared for us. But we're only going to be able to experience them after we have renewed our mind, okay? So again, the fight of your life is actually the fight for your life. And this is a life that we are fighting for, the life that God predestined for us, the life that Jesus talks about in John 10:10, 10, 10, where he says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I came that you might have life and have it to the full till it overflows. This is the life that we are fighting for. This is the life that we are believing God, that when his word gets implanted in our hearts, as we meditate on it, as we decree it, as we declare it, and then the Holy Spirit is brooding and he's moving upon our mind and he's moving upon our emotions. And as we begin to impact the word of God in our souls, we will see a change in our lives. Ooh, calm down, Catherine. This message did something to me even preparing it. So the topic again this morning is the power of a renewed mind. Listen to this. I have a coaching questionnaire that I used to give um, to my clients early in my coaching that I'm literally revisiting using with my future clients because as I went back and I came across this questionnaire, it is so powerful. And even the questions, two of the questions that I ask uh, just generates a powerful discussion and a whole lot of aha moments. And these two questions are, what do you believe is the number one thing? For example, fear, your mentality, the past, rejection, low self-esteem. What do you believe is the number one thing that keeps you from walking in the fullness of what God designed for you, okay? The second question is, what would your life look like if that thing was removed? So what is the number one thing, what is the number one thing that keeps you from, that you believe, this is a question I ask my coaching clients, that you believe that keeps you from walking in the full manifestation of who God has called you to be, what he's called you to do, and where he has called you to end up. What do you believe that number one thing is? And then I ask him, what would your life look like? if that thing was removed. And this is what I asked them. I tell them, give me a very detailed description. Describe that life down to the smallest of details and hold that image or hold that description in your mind from this day forward. Okay, what do you believe is the one thing that's going to hinder you? And if that thing was removed, what would your life look like? That one thing that is hindering you, that one thing that is keeping you from the will of God, my God. And the goal is to get them to conceive, 
to take into their mind. To conceive means to take into one's mind. When we get pregnant with the things of God, we literally take those things and those visions into our minds. So the thing that I'm trying to get them to do is to conceive what your life would look like if that thing was removed. So this is what, this is the top three things, write these down, the top three things that they mentioned that keeps them from walking in the fullness of what God designed for them is number one, their mind. Number two, fear. And number three, a poor self-image. And I want to take a brief look at the, all three of these before I move into uh, the meat of my message. But the mind, as believers, we must understand that an unrenewed mind is a terrible thing to rely on. An unrenewed mind, a mind that has not been regenerated, a mind that is still carnal, a mind that has not been renewed with the word of God is an unreliable thing to, to, trust, to, to put your trust in. Amen? It cannot be trusted to get you to your future or your destiny. If your mentality has not been renewed, if your mentality has not been washed with the word of God, you will not reach your destiny in God. There will be no expected end. You'll arrive to a place, but it won't be the place that God has predestined for you. Why? Because the Bible says that we are to renew our mind, be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we will be able to prove what is the good, acceptable will of God for our lives. So outside of a renewed mind, we can never know what the will of God is for our lives. Which is why many people settle for counterfeits. Many people settle for fake stuff. And stuff that God never predestined to bring into their lives. Why? Because they're still trying to acclimate and, and appropriate the things of God with a mind that is still old. A mind that has not been renewed by the word of God. Because when your mind has been renewed by the word of God, you have a new perspective. You have a new outlook on life. You say, no, 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 this is not where God has predestined for me to be. This is just a comma in my life. And I'm going to have, I must have need of patience. Because after I have done the will of God, I might receive the promise. But this place, this place is not the will of God for my life. Oh, Jesus. And the only way to understand that is you got to have a renewed mind. Put this in your notes. Um, Proverbs 23 and 7. We become what we think. Oh, my. We become what we think. The word of the Lord says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm. So our lives and what we are experiencing is the sum total of the thoughts that we have thought. So we literally create it with our mind because your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <laughs> because what's on your mind is, uh, I can guarantee you, is what's going to come out of your mouth. And when your mouth is full and when your mind is full of the word of God, then your mouth will be full of the word of God. And then your behavior will be governed by the word that you think and that you speak. Come on. It's a mind, mouth, action kind of thing. But it starts with your mind. How you feel and how you behave is a direct result of how you think. It's how we think. Amen. That determines how we're going to feel and how we feel determines how we're going to behave. Mm. But when your mind has not been renewed, when it's unregenerated, you will settle for the comma instead of waiting on the period. Woo! Instead of God putting an exclamation point behind your situation. But when it's a comma, you understand that this is just a process that I must go through. This is just a trial and a situation. But I understand why. Because my mind has been renewed and this is not how the story ends. Come on. I already know how the story ends. Come on. In three days, he got up. They crucified him, but in three days, he got up. And I'm getting up from this situation, but I got to allow the word to have his perfect work in me that I may be established and entire. Listen to this, wanting nothing. Why? Because I understand the situation. Why? Because my mind is full of the word of God. My heart is full of the word of God. The engrafted word of God now has saved my soul, has saved my mind, saved my will and my emotions. When I'm in the middle of the situation, 
That's why the, the song, I think there's a song that came out and said you can praise him in the middle of it. Why? Because your mind has been renewed and you understand that glory to God, it's the word of God. Woo! It's, it's God's Holy Spirit. Come on. The Bible says that we're to work out our own soul salvation. It doesn't say soul, but it means soul. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. How, is, how are you going to work out your own healing, your own deliverance, your own breakthrough? It's going to be through the word of God. It's going to be through the sp power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be through your obedience. It's something about them twin powers activating. Come on here, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Sp it's something about the word of God and the spirit of God. When they come together, oh, you better tell your situation, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you no weapon formed against me if God be for me I feel sorry uh, for who is against me for what is against me because when the word of God and when the Holy Spirit gets to working but the first thing it works on is your mind, your perspective, how you see this thing, how you see it. Oh, my God. And in the middle of it, glory to God, God will give you patience. Patience is the ability to endure hardship, delay, and disappointment without becoming angry, without becoming mad. How many patient folk we got in here? Oh, come on up in here. How many patient folk we got in here? I'm talking about you going through a trial. But when you are patient, you ain't walking around with no attitude. You're not walking around with the blame game. You're not walking around projecting your stuff off on everybody else. But you go into a place of self-reflection. You do away with projection. The blame game, it was them, it was this, it was that. And you begin to say, okay, God, what is it in me? that needs this trial? What is it in me? Oh my God, that needs this process. What is it in me that needs to go through this trial so that when I get to my next level of glory that you're bringing me into, oh my God, that place is secure. Why? Because I've dealt with my mind. I've dealt with my emotions. I've dealt with my stubborn will. See, because that part of the soul we don't talk about is the will. It's the will, our decisions, our choice, what we want. Woo! Jesus said, not my will, God. Not my will be done, but thine. God, it ain't what I want. And you got to get to a place, if you're not full of the word of God, if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will never get to that place. You'll always be working your will. And God is saying, my will is better than yours. My way is better than yours. It might not feel good, but after a while, it's going to yield a harvest. Uh, the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared to the, listen at this, the glory that is being revealed and formed in you. But God says you got to go through some things and you won't pass the test. Glory to God. If you're not in my word, you won't pass the test. If you're still trying to live a, a new life with an old mentality. A new life with an old mentality. And God says, that's why things are not working for you. That's why I sent you here to get this word this morning. Because I want you to go into 2022 and get everything that I predestined. I don't want you to leave nothing on the table in 2022. I want at the end, December the 31st, 2022, I want you to be able to check off. I did this. I got that. And God says, you're not going to be able to do it if you don't renew your mind. If you don't get in my word and let my word work give it time to work stop quoting three scriptures amen for a week and believing everything's gonna change God says no the Bible says that Joseph was tested by the word that came to him and God says the word will test you it will try you before it manifests because God says I want to see if you for real for real oh come here Abraham now I know Abraham that you love me now I know because you went up the mountain and was willing to give up your only begotten son. Now I know you for real, for real. Now I know you're not just play, play in this thing. Now I know you're not just about talk. 
because we can talk good when everything is going well. But baby, I, oh my God, I don't look like what I've been through. People look at me and my husband and think we ain't going through nothing. Oh my God, but if I had time to testify about how the Lord brought us out, amen, of 2021 with our right minds, glory to God. Hey, am I sure we still together. We love one another. And if, if it were not for the word, I would have lost my mind. If the proof I shake it, if it were not for the Holy Spirit, I would have been throwing the tower and said, I quit this, this, and that. But it's the word. The Bible says that he upholds us with his word. He upholds us with his truth. And it's this word that's going to transform your mind. It's this word, who my shake It's this word that's going to bring you into your wealthy place. It's this word that's working when it don't look like it's working. It's this word that's working when it don't look like it's working. It's this word that's working when it looks like it's dead. Oh, come here, Lazarus. Come here, Lazarus. Come forth, Lazarus. Dead and had been in the grave. Had to start stinking. But when the word stepped on the scene, come here, Lazarus. And then, then what did it say to the grave? Go loose him and let him go. Oh, my shade, this is what I love the word. I love the word. I talk the word. I, I quote the word. I post the word. Why? Because I know the power of the word. And as Pastor Robert said on last, the last time he was up, it's a spiritual phenomena about how the word can transform your mind, about how the word, glory to God, that's engrafted and planted in your soul that will allow you to hang on, that allow you glory to God. Ooh, my shade, thank you, Holy Spirit. We ain't hanging on, we standing. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and having done all this stand stand and you got to stand and look the devil in the eye wherever he is and say i trust god i believe god oh my shake all last year i said god ain't going out like this ain't going out like this ain't going out like this i'm not going out broke i'm not going out despondent i'm not going out depressed i'm not going out full of anxiety i'm not going out full of fear but god i'm going out on top with your word in my mouth though he slay me yet will I trust Ooh. he said you are looking at the resurrection and the life so what if it dies I am the resurrection and the life I can bring that thing back to life oh, Jesus take your seats I can bring that thing back to life there's something about the power of God's word. Well, who is? The word of God has a name and his name is Jesus. Yeshua, our healer, our deliverer, our comforter. So we, when we have the word of God, the Bible says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It moved into our neighborhood. One particular version said it moves into our situation. Can these bones live? You know, God. Why are you asking me? Can these bones live? They can live if you open up your mouth and prophesy. Come on, this 2022 year will be a life full of blessings if you open up your mouth and command your year. Oh, come on, command your year. Don't just command your morning, but command your year. Tell your year, look, things are going to change around here now. Isn't that what Sophia said? Things are getting ready to change, right? She said, Sophia back. And this is what you ought to say when you get your mind back and get your mind right. Oh, things are getting ready to change around here. I got my groove back. Come on. Stella ain't the only one that got her groove back. Oh, my God. Catherine got her groove back. Oh, Dia got her groove back. Angie got her groove back. Cherie got her groove back. Why? Because we got the word of God. Hey, we're standing in front of that giant. Glory to God and say, hey, you coming to me this way? But I got the word of God in my mouth. 
rock, which symbolizes Jesus, and the slingshot was the Holy Spirit. It said, Yehovah, shake what you got? This is what I'm working with. What you got? And this is what you got to tell your situation. What you got? Mm, there you about show. Come on, you can't be scared either. You got to walk in the authority and the boldness of what God has given you. I've given you power over all unclean spirits. In my name, they got to go. I dare you to start walking around your house and say things are going to change around here in 2022. There's going to be plenty of money. There's going to be plenty of honey. There's going to be plenty of love making. Oh, come on up in here. That's if you're married, that is. There's going to be plenty of love making. Oh, my God. And my cup is going to run over. Why? Because I got my mind back. I got the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is not a defeated mind. The mind of Christ is not a complaining mind. But the mind of Christ is one that understands that it's just a process. How is it that you want to reach your destination and you don't want to be tried? The trying of your faith works patience. God says, I want to renew your mind because the mind that you're working with is not work. It's not work. It's not worked. The mentality of your family, the mentality of your culture, the mentality of your city and your community. God says you can, that's why you can be in a place and not be affected by the surroundings of that place. Why? Because you are from a different world. It, oh my God. It's a different world than where we come from. We are of kingdom. We are kingdom people. We are kingdom citizens. And, 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 and Elder Lisa, we see things different. When our minds is full of the word of God and when we're relying on the Holy Spirit, we see things different. Come on. Why? Because we have a view from above. The Bible says set your affections on things that are above. Set your mentality. Set your mindset on things that are above. Our view should be one from above where we're seated in, woo, my God, heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Everything that's trying to trap us, apostle, is under our feet. Literally, hallelujah. And God says, I need you to remain seated. Oh, my God, that's a message. I need you to remain seated. Remain in your posture. Remain in Christ. Because there's going to come some things that's going to try to move you out of your seat. That's going to try to move you out of your position. I told somebody just the other day, don't stop for side shows or distractions. But stay focused on what God has given you. Stay focused. Don't stop for the side shows. Oh my God. Because if you let the devil have a stage, if you give him your, your attention, he's going to put on a show. And you used to tell him, no, we're not, we not attending any side distractions or side shows in 2022. Why? Because I have somewhere to be. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood in 2022. Why? Because I have somewhere to be. We're not stopping to, oh my God, pay attention to shade. Glory to God. As a matter of fact, we're going to get us a uh, chair and sit up under that shade. Uh, oh God, uh, come on up in here. We don't have time for that in 2022 because we have places to be, things to see, and people to do it with. Come on up in here. We got things to do for the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify me, which is in heaven. And God says, you can't do that with a mind that ain't, that ain't sure, that don't know. One day you're up and one day you're down. One day you're almost level to the ground. Glory to God. God says, I want to stabilize your mind. And nothing can stabilize your mind like the word of God. Nothing can stabilize your mind like the word of God. It is an anchor to your soul, my God. It's an anchor to your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when you're in the word of God, it's like letting an anchor down. And though the breakers may come and the winds may blow and glory to God, the waves is crashing against you in the spirit. You said, you, wasn't, you know what? I will not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters, I will not be moved. And this is a season where, oh my God, hear this prophetic direction. Hear this prophetic directive. You cannot be easily moved in this season. In this season, you have to anchor yourself in the word of God so that you are not easily moved. 
Because time is of the essence, I hear the Lord say. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. There's some things you're going to experience in 2022, which is why I'm bringing you this word, because I need you to get your mind, the sound mind. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us love. Listen to this power and a sound mind, a self-controlled mind, a disciplined mind. In those three things, God said, I've given you everything that you need to, oh my God, to dominate in this life we talking about love power and a sound mind he's given us a god paid dunamis and a disciplined self-controlled mind and the word does that come on you don't don't you don't have to get nervous and think you have to renew your mind by yourself you got help look over at somebody and holler you got help you got help i know they can't you got help you got help through the holy spirit it's a spiritual phenomenon when you get in the word of god and you allow the holy spirit to move upon that word it's oh my god you'll find yourself walking out of mentalities that had you hostage for years you'll find yourself walking out of generational curses you'll find yourself walking out of generational debt and poverty why it the word did it my God the word did it God's spirit did that and people think that their situation is beyond oh fix it and God says no I just need to change your mind I just need to give you a new perspective come on you seeing men as trees I need to anoint you and lay my hands on you I need for you to get in the word so you can see clearly so that you can see through my lenses and when you see through my lenses you will see that there is nothing too hard for me that I specialize in hard cases I hear the word of the Lord is there anything too hard for God God said, bring it. I can handle it. Bring it. I can handle it. But God, you know what I did. Bring it. I can handle it. But God, you know what I do. Hey, In the secret of my own home, bring it. I can handle it. Oh, God, but you know generational poverty has been on my family for many, many years. Bring it. I can handle it. I'm going to teach you how to think. I'm going to teach you how to think. See, because you're putting the cart before the horse. You're trying to get out there. You got your new website. Glory to God. You got your new photo shoots. But you forgot you didn't get a new mind. Come on. Come on. What is it? Woo, boy, what is it good to have a, a new website with an old mind? Woo. Come on, you spending all that money on photo shoots. You got a new website. You got your new flyers. And God said you forgot to get a new mind. Do you not understand that you can't put new wine in old bottles? You can't put new wine, new oil in old wine skins. And God says you cheesing and you smiling and you got a immaculate, you got an immaculate website, but your mind is still old. You didn't cultivate. Come on, you put the cart before the horse. You didn't take time to renew your mind. You didn't put in the work. You didn't do what you needed to do so that when you got all that new stuff up, that new photo shoot, that new website, you will be ready. God says, I'm holding things back because I don't want to embarrass you. I'm holding things back because I don't want to embarrass you. You look like you got things together, but I know you're still thinking, stinking. I know you still got limited beliefs. I know how you put this and that title on it, but you don't even believe me for millions. You don't even believe for me to walk you into the wealthy place. Come on up in here. It's first the mentality before it would ever be your reality. It's first the mentality for it will ever be your reality. And God says, glory to God. Let them laugh. Let them laugh and show a raggedy website. Come on. Let them laugh. But you can say, I, I tell you what, when I show up, my mind going to be right. When I show up, my mind going to be right. When I show up, I'm going to know what to do. I'm going to have strategies. I'm going to have principles. See, see, because y'all get out here and you don't last long. But when I get out here, I come to stay. I come to stay for the long haul. So it's taking God a little bit of time because I got jacked up in my childhood. Oh, yes, I did. It's taking God a little time. But glory Glory to God. Out a while. Look at somebody and say, out a while. Out a while. Out a while. Glory to God. I'm going to put my hat in the bunch too. Let them laugh at your three followers. Let them laugh at the four folk that show up on your live. They don't understand, Shawanda. Glory to God that we work. God working on something. He working on something. When you see me in my word, God working on something. When you see me praising God, God working on something. When you see me fasting, God is working on something in me. So he can bless folk through me. 
I said, all this shady stuff is because people out here trying to work and they ain't got the right mind. And folk know, folk know. Let them laugh. I'm getting my mind right. I tell you what, I ain't going to have no new website and no old mentality. Keep spending hundreds of dollars on photo shoots when you need to just get somewhere and get in a prayer closet and begin to just pray and say, God, help my mind. Snatch this mess off of me. God, I'm not going to be broke another day in my life. Snatch this stuff off of me. God, get this out of me. And the only way to do that is the word of God. The engrafted word has the ability to save your soul, to rescue you, to rescue you from generational things, to rescue you from high blood pressure to rescue you oh yes that's that's what i said yeah from sickness and disease because with that new mentality it's going to come a new way of eating a new way of thinking a new way of working out see because we think this stuff is magic god said no it's not magic and stop being frustrated with me stop being frustrated with your pastor stop being frustrated with your church and put your f- spotlight on you You don't want to renew your mind. You want to walk around in bitterness and unforgiveness. You don't want to love nobody. And keep moving from place to place and don't realize that that mind, you're transporting that mind with you. Because there's one thing you can't get away from. You can leave here and move to Atlanta. You can leave here to Black Mecca, right? You can leave here and move to California, L.A., but you're going to still be in L.A. with a jacked up mind. Oh, did she say that? A jacked up mind if you don't get your mind renewed. Because the common denominator is you. It's your way of thinking. And God says, I want to bring you into the good land. I want you to be able to possess the good land, but you got to dispossess, which is a word. You got to put out, you got to evict the mentalities, the ikes that's in your mind. You got to drive them out. And the Bible says that they didn't go out all at once. But little by little, they were driven out. This is not an overnight thing, but it's a process. That's why you must have need of patience. Luke 19 and 21 says, possess ye your soul with patience. Possess it with patience. And don't be hard on yourself. You got to say, look, I didn't get jacked up overnight. So I'm not going to have one service. I'm not going to read three scriptures. And this thing is going to be gone. This is what my chiropractor said to me. I, I've been in so much pain over last year. And I said, God, Jesus, I got I to gotta go see somebody. And, and Angie with her good self, she said, look, she gave me her chiropractor's uh, number and information. And I went to him. And I began to tell him everything that was going on. And he took pictures of everything. And he said, okay, it doesn't look bad. I see a little arthritis here, a little, see something a little here. He said, well, what it is is that you, I got to realign your spine. Because he saw me, there was a hard limp when I went in. He said, I got to realign your spine. And on the first day, he said, look, in the shape that you're in, and he wasn't speaking nothing on me. He said, but with your situation, that was what he said. He said, you won't have to come to me more than once a week. You will have to come at least three times a week. He said, because see, I can adjust your spine, but because it's used to being out of line, he said, I can adjust it and it'll be like this today. He said, but tomorrow it can move back over here. He said, but when you come back and they call them adjustments, when you come back and get your adjustment, I'll put it back in place. And then you'll leave, and then it'll go, it'll go back over here. But that's okay. That's all right. Why? Because you're coming back. Because you're being consistent. And the more you apply the word of God, come on up in here. The word of God is like a battering ram. It'll knock any door down. Come on. It, will, it can get into anything. But God, that's like my chiropractor said. He said, look, the shape you are in, the, your situation, it's not going to take just once a week. But I'm going to need to see you at least three times a week. And I saw him for a full week, Angie. And I tell you, I came to church the next day, and it was you. Melanie, you said, whoa, you walking straight. Woo, listen at the word. You walking straight. And I was like, oh, God, this is going to work. But something happened, and my week got busy, and I wasn't able to go but once a week. And this week, last week, my doctor was sick, so he was out a whole week. So that was two full weeks that I had not seen him. And guess what? I had start back limping again. But I said, that's all right, because Monday's coming. Listen at this. Monday's coming, and he's going to be back in that office, and I'm going to say, hey, hit me. Adjust me. Adjust me. And this is what you're doing when you come to the word of God. You're saying, God, adjust me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God does not have to adjust to you. You have to make the adjustments. God is right and we are wrong. We are the ones who make the adjustments. 
And this is what I'm going to say to him. Hey, hit me. Hit me right there. Hit me. Do that neck. Do that. Yeah. And after, I, after a few weeks, with the maneuver of his hands, I see myself. Look, listen at this. I see hope now. Listen, listen, Katina. And I went up in there asking him, talking about, well, when can I get in my heels? He said, we ain't even thinking about no heels right now. Listen, because y'all know me. I'm low to the ground. I need a little high. Mm. I need a little high. I'm Christine's daughter. I'm used to wearing six, seven and, and inches heels. He said, what? Mm -mm, no. He said, you don't know. Don't even think about no heels right now. Isn't that something? We are thinking about stuff that's going to jack up and bind us up while we're trying to get some help. I'm thinking about some heels. But until then, honey, I'm going to wear my flats. You got my flats, Antoinette? You were supposed to buy me some flats. Amen? Come on, I'm going to wear my flats and I'm going to be cute with it. Come on. You got to work with what you're working with until you get what you need. See, my mind won't write. I'm in there talking about some heels in pain. And this is what God is saying. You guys, you, I'm trying to get to the area where you most need it. And you're trying to give me your arm when it's your leg. And the adjusters, listen to this. I see the x-rays. I see what needs to be adjusted. And the word of God is like a mirror. It's like an x-ray. It'll show up your heart. The Bible says that it's able to discern the hearts of men. And then it separates spirit from soul. So this is what the word of God does. It adjusts and brings us back in alignment with the life so that we can meet and reach the place that God has predestined for us to reach. But it's through his word. Saints, we got to fall in love with the word of God. We got to understand that the word of, I don't just study the word of God just to preach. I study the word of God so that I'll know how to live. So that my mind can be renewed. So that my emotions can be stable. Because my temperament, my, 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 you know, my natural tendency is, is, is one of, of anxiety and, and fear and emotionally un instability. So I know what it takes. I'm talking about my natural tendency. But when I step over in the Holy Ghost, when I step over in the Holy Spirit, when I forget those things that are behind me and press toward the mark of the new man that I've been created in through Christ Jesus. So it's easy to revert back to your natural tendencies, your natural, and every temperament has weaknesses. Every temperament has shortcomings. But that's the thing that I love about the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I hear the word of the Lord says that in my weaknesses is God's strength made perfect. God says as long as you stay in me, as long as you stay in my word, I can handle that. I can cover that. I can get to make it so to the point where that thing has left you. Even though your natural temperament will always be with you. You can't get away from your flesh, but you can train it. This is so good. You can train it and tell it what it's going to do and what it's not going to do. This is what Paul says when he said, I deny myself. I beat my flesh daily and bring it into submission. Bring it under the word of God because I understand that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that he's the spirit of truth. And that he's our teacher and he'll lead and guide us into all truth. That he's a recaller that he will bring to remembrance. He will remind us of what God said concerning us. Woo. Has the Holy Spirit ever reminded you of something? I mean, you was in a deep depression and you was in a deep situation. And the Holy Spirit came and brought a scripture back to your remembrance about what God was going to do. And the next thing you know that you was quickened according to the word of the Lord. You don't even remember what you were sad about, what you were depressed about. Why? Because the word of the Lord came unto you. It moved into your situation. I got to stop. This is so good. Unregenerated, not reformed, not spiritual. That's what unregenerated means. Unregenerated means this. It means not reformed. It means not spiritual. It's a carnal mind. A mind that has not been, listen at this, converted. A mind that has not been renewed. Romans 8 and 6 says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, listen at this, is life and peace. Is life and peace. So when you walk in the Holy Spirit, according to the word of God, there's life and peace. 
our mentalities determine the condition and the quality of our lives. I know some people don't want to, don't want to believe that, but it's true. As a man thinks, so is he. You become what you, what you believe. You become what you think. So here why it's so important for us to begin to get in the word of God and allow our minds to be renewed, allow our minds to be uh, transformed. The word transform there, and I'm going to take you there in a little bit. If you can go ahead and go there, Romans 12 and 2. The word transformed means to be changed into another form. It's a metamorphosis experience. So uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says that we are new creatures in Christ and behold, old things have passed away and all things have become new. Well, how do they become new? How do we live this new life? It's through a renewed mind. We, we look, Listen, we're changed into another form. Hmm. This is so good. So we get to get a chance to get a do-over. We get a chance to be born again. If we, don't, if we don't like how we were born, if we don't like our natural temperament and how the weaknesses, we can be born again. We get to get a do-over. Oh, my God. Let me get there. Romans 12. Hallelujah. Romans 12. And 12. It says, do not be conformed or do not be fashioned like this world, but be transformed. Be changed into another form. It's a metamorphosis experience by the renewing, by the renovation. The Greek word for renewing there means renovation. By the renovation of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. So renovate, we're talking about the power of a renewed mind. Renovate, listen that this means this. It means to restore something old to a good state of repair. This is so powerful. It means to refresh. It means to give life back to. It means to liven up. It means to stimulate. It means to revitalize. And this is, these are all of the things, Pastor Robert, that the word of God does to our mentality as we are taking the word of God. We're giving life back to our minds. We're livening it up. We're, we're stimulating it. And that, therefore, when we are around, we are lively stones. The Bible says that we are to be lively stones. Why? Because we've been quickened by the word of God. Mind renovation is this. It's about reconditioning our minds to think the thoughts, the plans, the purposes of God. When you talk about the thoughts of God, you're talking about the plans of God, the purposes of God, which is his word. His word is his thoughts concerning you and I. So let me read that for you again. Mind renovation is about reconditioning. So that we know that we, we're, we're new creatures in Christ. But that's the thing, your soul, your spirit has been made alive unto God. But it's your soul that you got to work out is salvation, meaning salve, meaning healing. That's what you got to, this hearing is why the word of God, James 1 and 21 says that the engrafted word, listen, has the ability to save your soul. Because just because you got born again, it didn't mean that you got an automatic renewed mind. That now you have to do your part in renewing your mind. And your part is getting in the word, those spiritual disciplines, reading the word of God, studying the word of God, fasting, praying, meditating on the word of God. <clears throat> so it's about reconditioning our minds to think the thoughts, the plans, the purposes of God. Mind renewal is this. It's about making your mind new again powerful it's about making your mind new again regardless of the mind the mentality the culture the way of thinking that you were born into because of Christ we get to do a do-over that is so powerful look at somebody tell them I'm gonna do a do-over I know I got y'all talking to each other today I don't do a lot of this but I feel we just need to share with somebody about this newness we getting ready to walk into I'm getting ready to do a do-over and it starts with my mentality. It starts with my mindset. It starts with understanding that I'm a child of God. My God, I'm a child of God. I don't, my dad is not the butler, but my daddy is Yahweh, the great I am, and whatever I need him to be. So you got Yahweh, I am, and then you got Yahshua, who is the healer, who is the deliverer, who is the intercessor. You got all that on board, but yet you are still walking around undefeated. It's because your mind has not been renewed. Because when your mind has been renewed, I don't care what you have, I don't care what you don't have, I don't care what has not manifested yet you carry yourself like you already have it because why now faith is the substance
substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I, I done told you I don't care how they laughing at you, how they looking at you, but after a while, you're going to have the last laugh. God is going to have the last laugh. So you got to carry yourself. You got to carry yourself. I don't care if you don't have a pot or a window. Come on, to throw it out. Come on. You got to carry yourself like you already got it. You got to, oh my God. God said to me the other day, glory to God. You got to show up how you want to be perceived. And I went to Apostle, because he'd already, God had already given me this, 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 for, this word for K.P. Realty. He said, business suits and closing tables. Business suits and closing tables. And we had the bells, glory to God. Can we give God praise for them and their new home? Hallelujah. The woman of God is here this morning in the midst of moving. Hallelujah. Um, I told Apostle, I said, you know what? I'm going with you for this closing right here. I'm going. Because usually, y'all, I'm studying, I'm working. I said, shoot, I, I, I'm going. And the Holy Spirit, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, show, show up how you want to be perceived. So, y'all, I got my best stuff out. I mean, I, I was, I thought I was cute. Come on, I walked in that closing, and this is the first thing that the man that let us in, he said, mm, y'all look good. Come on, show up how you want to be perceived. Show up how you want to be perceived. And the Spirit of the Lord says, see there, see there? You, you better see, when you, you better trust God. You better trust God. I don't care if it ain't all the way together. You better show up how you want to be perceived. You better show up. Come on, you better show up as a child of God. You better show up as Abba's daughter. Come on, you better show up that, oh my God, my daddy is the king. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on, everything in this land belongs to my daddy. So I'm showing up like I'm an heir. Woo! Like I'm an heir of God and a joy of Christ Jesus. Why? Because I am. But don't you live in the projects? No, I, mm -hmm, no, no, I don't live in the projects. No, I don't live in the projects. Come on. No, I don't live in the projects. Well, didn't your husband leave you with five kids and, and you struggling? No, 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 my husband didn't leave me struggling. Come on. No, my husband didn't leave me struggling. Why? Because in my mind, I always win. Why? Woo, I always win. Why? Oh, my God. We always win. It's a fixed fight. But God said, if I can get your mentality to be the mentality of a winner so that you show up how you want to be perceived. Oh, my God. And I, ooh, I see some of y'all getting new wardrobes. I see some of y'all showing up different. I see you showing up with a new wardrobe. I see you showing up with a new attitude. Because people will treat you how they perceive you. And come on, he, pulled, he said, ooh, have, have a seat over here. I didn't show up in no jeans and no t-shirt. Come on, for representing KP Realty. I stood up and I said, I ain't have my heels on though, but I, hey, I was cute. Yeah. I ain't have my heels on, but I, he said, woo, y'all look good. Holy Ghost says, show up how you want to be perceived. Show up in 2020 how you want to be perceived. Come on, lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and watch the king of glory come into 2022 and blow your mind. Lift up your head. You don't have anything to hang your head down for. Yes, it happened. Yes, it's happening. But I hear the word of the Lord say, lift up your head, oh ye gates. Lift up your thinking and let the king of glory come in. The kingdom of God is not with observation, but the kingdom of God is within you. What is the kingdom of God? It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, right standing in God. It's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on up in here. And when you show up, glory to God, the basilia of God shows up. The kingdom of God shows up. And everything has to conform to who you are. Everything, oh my God. Hey, everybody know who you are but you. Glory to God. The angels know who you are. The devils know who you are but you don't know who you are and God said I need you to show up different in 2022 I need you to show up like you own the place because you do my God yo daddy come on yo daddy the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof come on up in here you waiting on things that happen and God says it's already happened. Come on, Jesus Christ has already came, bled and died and was resurrected on the third day. God says what you're waiting on. And he says, yeah, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another comforter who will be the spirit of truth, who will lead and guide you. Who will be your spiritual GPS system in this thing called life. Will give you a turn by turn navigation. Turn this way. 
turn this way, but Holy Ghost, come on, it's trials and troubles on this way. Yeah, yeah, just like I led Jesus up into the wilderness. There's a place I got to lead you to be tested and tried. But this is what I need you to do. I need you to meditate. Come here, Joshua 1 and 8. I need you to meditate on the word. Do not let this word depart out of your mouth, but meditate on it, mutter it, study it, talk it, speak it. Don't let it come out of your mouth, but meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do, that you may observe to obey all that is written therein. Listen to this. For then shall you make your way prosperous. Way there is your journey. Listen to this. Your course of life. Because you will have all of the wisdom that you need. That's coming through the word of God that you meditated therein day and night. So now you can, you can make your way prosperous. And then you can have good success. And then he goes on in verse 9 says, Didn't I tell you to be strong and very courageous and be not afraid? Isn't that what I said to you? For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Listen at the word and the spirit of God working to encourage you, to keep you up, to keep you to a place where you're not fainting. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. It's the word. It's the word and the spirit that is working together in collaboration that's holding you together. If it were not for the word of God, if it were not for his spirit, I have to testify I, I don't know where I would be. I, don't, I can only imagine what frame of mind I would be in if it were not for the word of God stabilizing me. Stand to your feet all over this place. I feel the power of God. Oh, mande. Ubanda da ba shekeyaba. Ubanda debe shukuma. Come on, worship him. Ubanda debe shukuma yaman. Lift those hands all over this place and begin to worship God. The spirit of the Lord is here. He's moving over this place. He's brooding over this place. He's moving upon your heart, your mind. He's moving upon your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I decree and declare, let there be soundness in your mind. Let there be soundness in your mind. And as I release that prophetic decree, the spirit of the Lord is moving. The spirit of the Lord is moving upon your heart. The spirit of the Lord is moving upon your mind. Elevate your mind. Elevate your mind. Elevate your mind. Elevate your mind. I hear that. Elevate your mind. Elevate your mind. On this first Sunday of the year, God brought you here to elevate your thinking, to elevate your mentality. Because I do, I see it for those of you under the sound of my voice, for those of you who are watching via Facebook Live. I see in the spirit that you're moving into that place. Bible says that we go from glory to glory. I see you reaching that place and it's all, it's going to be all because you received the word of the Lord in your heart and you conceived it. There's conception taking place even now under the sound of my voice and even as I was preaching and, and talking, the word of God was reaching and hitting your soul, the soil of your mind and you were becoming pregnant with the things of God. You were becoming pregnant. You conceived, you took into your mind the life that God desired for you to live come on the life that God desires for you to live I hear the Lord saying use your divine imagination use your divine imagination I hear the Lord saying I'm going to anoint your imagination and I'm going to begin to show you I'm going to begin to show you I'm getting ready to lead you into green pastures and beside still waters I'm getting ready to show you who you really are I'm getting ready to show you 
I have the word of the Lord. Search my word, search my word, search my word. Eat my word as daily bread, as daily bread. And God says, I'm going to give you a new picture. I'm getting ready to give you a new picture. And the fire of God, the Holy Spirit is going to burn. I set fire to the blueprints of hell concerning your life. I set fire to the blueprints of hell concerning your life. And I decree and declare that you will walk in your divine imagination, that you will begin to see that thing. And it won't just be a mentality first. Yes, it must be a mentality first, but then you're going to walk into that thing. You're going to walk into your wealthy place. I keep hearing that in my spirit, wealthy place, a wealthy place. And that's not always talking about riches and cars and lands, even though that is a part of that. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to bring you into total prosperity Woo. Mm. holistic success holistic success oh my shake oh mandela ba shake your mandela ba show oh my god yes and yes sheree the spirit the spirit of prosperity is on you daughter the spirit of prosperity is on you god says i got my eye on you and i'm going to reward you for your fidelity for your faithfulness god says i see you god says i see you but this thing that you're pioneering you're plowing through for other single mothers and god says yes prosperity is your portion Wealth is your portion. God says the things that I'm going to do in your life, daughter, is going to not just blow your mind. It's going to blow the minds of those that are around you. They're watching you. But God says your faithfulness, who by Shekeyama, is acting as a crowbar. It's acting as a crowbar. And God says don't stop plowing. Don't stop speaking my word. Don't stop showing up. Don't stop encouraging. Because heaven, well by shade, there's a host. You have a cloud of witnesses Sheree that is that is witnessing and that is that's got their eye on you and God says at the appointed time I hear the word of the Lord for you Kairos time God says I am going to come in the fullness of time and I'm gonna bless you daughter I'm gonna bless you for hey who God say God says you could have thrown in the tower you could have walked back but God says you who my say you kept at it you kept believing me and God says I'm gonna reward you daughter I am going to reward you you great is your name great as you keep worshiping him I'm gonna make your name great I'm gonna make your name great I the spirit of the Lord said I'm going to give you a revelation of what that means what that looks like I'm going to make your name great daughter I see you come on keep worshiping God keep worshiping keep worshiping keep worshiping a sound mind a sound mind a sound mind a sound mind a sound mind, a sound mind. Who banded it is Shaking? Lift those hands, Angie B. Lift those hands high. Oh, Bokoshe, Yamanda, Daba. Uh huh. Like you're reaching. Lift them like you're reaching, Angie B. Like you're reaching. Yeah. Go by 